Welcome to the Giga Hub Network. I am Adam, and I am going to talk today about a game that is near and dear to my heart called Hackmaster and what it all means. But first, I want to. Blood will run like a river. Exactly. I'm going to thank our sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert, where you can find all things comic book related. And we ship now. So check us out at CosmicComics.Vegas. Hit the Shop Now button. We have links below. All right. So. Hackmaster, what is it? Where did it come from? It's evolution. If you are familiar with the comic strip Knights of the Dinner Table, which actually is its own comic book now, as you can see this cool Thanos-related cover, Knights of the Dinner Table was obviously a parody of a D&D group, and it's very, very funny stuff. Um, Knights of the Dinner Table had a game that they played. They couldn't use, at the time, Advanced Dungeon Dragons Second Edition was out. At the time, TSR was very, uh, how should I say, Sue happy? Mm. So uh, they couldn't actually use... Yeah, yeah. They couldn't really use AD&D, so they made up a fictional game that they played called Hackmaster. Um, Knights of the Dinner Table first showed up in an independent gaming magazine called Shadis in issue number two in 1990. Um, and in 1996, it moved to Dragon Magazine from 1996 to 2000, where it was we where it was replaced eventually by Nodwick, which is another really great comic strip. Um, Knights of the Dinner Table continued on as a standalone comic book sporadically through the years since 1994, and still continues to this day. Um, it was created by Jolly Blackburn, and in 1997, he joined Kenzer and Company. Uh, with David Kenzer, and he's been with them ever since, and they've been publishing Knights of the Dinner Table. But they also published the very popular, one of the more popular D&D worlds called Kingdoms of Calamar, or the World of Talene, as sometimes it's also called. Uh, so the evolution of Hackmaster comes in. Thanks to uh, Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and & Dragons when they released 3rd edition in the late, late, late 90s, the very end of the 90s, actually, they also allowed an open license. Um, that allowed a lot of third-party companies to create a lot of content for their new D&D launch, which turned out to be wildly successful. Uh, they decided, Kenzer and company decided to make a fictional, they decided to make their fictional little analog for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2 a reality, and they called it Hackmaster 3rd Edition. It was really the first edition, but that was kind of the joke. Um, I'm going to show you some slides now of some of that game, which is really cool. Um, the things that the game had going for it, which was, in a well, part of it was also, in a way, some of its uh, hindrances. First of all, it had slam-bang twist on old D&D art by none other than Errol Otis himself doing parodies of his own artwork, so it's, like, really cool, yeah. It had a great tongue-in-cheek style. Um, one other aspect of the original Hackmaster is it specifically sort of meant or sort of put the DM and the players as adversaries, or at least the DM took an adversarial role. That was kind of the, that was kind of the fun of the game. Uh, it was originally set in Gary's world, which is kind of has a weird spelling, which was a play or a parody of the name Gary Jackson, who created Hackmaster, which is in turn a parody of famous game designers, Gary Gygax and Steve Jackson, Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson games. Hey. Right. Um, yep. Uh, as you can see, these pictures, some of these pictures are amazing. Uh, Kenzer and company also published the popular D and D setting of kingdoms of Cal. I already said that one. Sorry. Uh, kingdoms of Calamar. So a few years passed and in the late aughts, uh, Jolly Blackburn and associates and, uh, David Kenzer decided to make a go of Hackmaster. And they said, you know what? Let's make this a real game. Uh, they they decided to redo it from the ground up. It's a true evolution of the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. And it changed the setting into the D&D campaign into Kingdoms of Calamar, which is an incredibly, incredibly detailed world setting. So if you're looking to DM, they've done a lot of the work for you. Um, so, uh, so what they did, and I want to say it was like 2010 maybe 11, they came out with Hackmaster Basic, which was sort of an introduction to the rules. And then 2012, they published their Player's Handbook. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you the Player's Handbook. So the Player's, yeah, the player's Handbook is leather-bound. It's beautiful. Now, to be fair, it is structured similar to most D&D books, uh, especially since 3rd edition. Um, but it has the cool parchment borders. 
you know, it, it has the things you'd ex expect from it. Um, it has Hackmaster Gaming Association member signatures on the inside. Uh, one of the unique, there's one of the Aero Lotus artwork right there. One of, the unique, one of the unique things it did do, though, is unlike a lot of OSR games and why I think this belongs in an OSR category, because it is, in a sense, a very refined version of Advanced Dungeons Dragons 2nd Edition, yeah. is it is, to be fair, it is more of a simulation. Whereas a lot of a lot of the push in OSR right now is to get back to basics, where things are um, more uh, uh, theater of the mind with very loose miniatures and things. Hackmaster actually has a very detailed combat system that is more like a simulation. One of the things they do, it's interesting. Now, granted, to be fair, it does this part does turn it into almost a strategy game in a lot of ways. But the way it does initiative, it doesn't even do true initiative. Basically, once combat starts and your your guy goes into action, his initiative is only really counted right off the bat as to when he move when he actually hits right away. But once combat started, it's all determined by your individual skill with the weapon and what weapon you're using. And then you're restricted to a count, which basically is the seconds tick by, you get to act. When you different people engage you, you get to act, things like that. So it is a simulation. Um, if you're into such things, it's friggin' awesome. I love it. Unfortunately, my gaming group did not embrace it to the point that I did, but uh, some of them really liked it too. I, a few of us would. I was gonna say a few of us do want to get back to it. Speaking as someone who was who was in the gaming, you group, were in the gaming right? group, yep. Uh, it was a little complex. Yeah. Um, it, there was a steep learning curve. There was kind of a steep learning curve. Yeah. But once we got past that, I I enjoyed the game. It was cool. very deep. Yeah, once we got combat down, it went pretty smooth, yeah. But it was a learning curve, not going to lie to you. Um, you know, all the classes are here. There's talents, there's skills. You know, again, it is more detailed. It is much more similar to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So I, I feel it is an, uh, an OCR. I feel it deserves its place as an, I'm sorry, an OSR game. I feel it deserves its place as an OSR sort of renaissance game. Um, as you can see, I'm just sort of flipping through. It has very detailed spells. What, it is a beautiful book, yeah. What's really cool, yeah, what's really cool is you have this, oh, where did it go? I lost it. You have this really cool how to play Hackmaster. Oh, there it is. That's literally part of the Knights of the Dinner Table comic strip that explains everything. And it's really well detailed and thought out, so it's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's actually the player's handbook. Whole list of clerical spells, whole list of uh, wizard spells, but that isn't... Yeah, yeah. As, as Professor Dungeon Master on Dungeon Craft says, it's very crunchy. Too much, too much for him. I get that. Um, and then, of course, they came out. Well, they came out with the Hacklopedia Beast. I'll talk about that one in a second. But they also came out with a DM's Guide, which is a pretty nondescript book, which I like. It's also leather bound, though. But it, you know, just very quickly. That's a uh, that's uh, Gary Jackson right there sitting on a giant die. Um, it does go into very every aspect of being a dungeon master it talks about combat from a dm's perspective you know it has crit charts which they have an app for which makes it a lot faster which is really cool um it talks about the adventure spell casting and how to handle everything from a dm's perspective as well as magic items you know i it it actually annoys me that i see reviews for certain types of dm guides and how oh this is really good that's really good and hackmaster gets continually overlooked this book is great and it frustrates me that I think, in a way, Hackmaster probably came out, since it did really initially come out in 2012, I think it was almost a little too ahead of the OSR sort of renaissance. Yeah. So it sucks because it seems to sort of get ignored now, and I hate it because I think it is a great game. Um, so let's talk about the Hacklopedia Beast. Now, what makes this book cool, other than it is also leather-bound? Um, all these books can be purchased from... Kenzer company, uh, their yeah, their actual website. Um, they just launched a new website too. So, but what's cool about their Hacklopedia Beasts um, is that it it basically talks about morale. It has it, it's written as the point of a book you would pick up as an adventure, where it talks about different creatures, and these are the people who did the field research. <laughs> um, but it also talks about monster morale. So like. You know, you're fighting a bunch of goblins, and the goblins take, like, 10% losses. They might break. Um, another aspect it has, it just has really cool entries. I'm trying to get ahead to some creatures here. 
Did I grab the right book? Yeah, I think I'm just. I'm, I think I'm flipping to pages that just don't have anything. Okay, Goblin. There we go. It, ha it just the way it's laid out is really cool. You have the really cool, simple artwork. You actually have tracks where to where it tends to appear on Talene. It has its basic size, um, and it has this really cool rosette, which helps the DM keep like basically all you need to fight or use the creature in combat is that right there. And that's makes it cool. It has general info. It has yield in case you're a ranger and you want to cut it up for parts. And it's just really cool. Um, just a great layout. They recently also came out with a, um, they also recently came out with a Hacklopedia Beasts 2, which is another version of the book with even more creatures, which to be fair, in one of the early, I purchased it pretty early in one of the early drafts, they had a shit demon. I think I think it was called a shit demon. I wish they would have kept that name, but they didn't. They changed it to something else. But again, it's just that cool format where it's laid out like a book you would actually, as an adventurer, you would buy to kind of know what you're in for. So it's a really cool layout. Um, you know, the books are fairly pricey, but they are leather bound. And they're gorgeous books. Yeah, and they're yeah. and they're just gorgeous books. Um, they're beautiful books. They're solid. Um, you can get them right from their website. As you can see, I have mine all tabbed up for use. You can beat your players with them without leaving you, marks. You can beat your players without leaving marks. And this is a game, like I said, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, I'd like to get back to it again at some point. Um, I think it deserves its place in the OSR sort of games to play or at least check out. You can download Hackmaster Basic from Kenzerco free, and you can try it out. Um, Free, free 99, that's right. It costs you nothing. Um, so, I mean, that's something to consider. If you're looking for something a little more crunchy, as Professor DM says, uh, a little more of a simulation, Hagmaster may be what you're looking for. Um, and that's really all I got. Uh, please check it out. Uh, it's a great game. It's really well thought out. Uh, and that's really all I got. Um, thanks, everybody. Check out our links below. We're trying to grow the channel. we got a Patreon. Um, some of our members you may have seen on some of our other videos. They also have some links below that you can check out. And that's it. Thanks, everybody, and good night. <laughs>